Hi guys and welcome back. About four years ago I tried the very first DAC of Musician Audio, which was the Pegasus, which impressed at that time with a natural flow, with its tonality, with a higher than average resolution for an art war ladder DAC. They released a successor to it, which is called Pegasus 2, which I'll be trying today, which goes for the same 1100 US dollars. And if we take inflation into account, then it's by around 70% cheaper nowadays, which is actually quite interesting. Some things were changed, some things remained unchanged, but let's check it out in the usual fashion. Let's go. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, and that's exactly what we're getting with the Pegasus. We have the same buttons, the same inputs and outputs, the same fully CNC machined aluminum case, and the same metallic fit, and in truth, it looks exactly like uh, the Pegasus 1. Compared to the original Pegasus, we now have a custom-made AC socket with uh, gold-plated contacts. The capacitance of electrolytics went up by 50%, which is always a good thing. Let's check its internal components, and let me explain why in 2024 this will be a desirable duct to have in a head fire battle station, but also in a stereo setup. For starters, we have the highest precision, 0.05% resistors, which are forming two stereo ladders. There is no way to check that information, but if that's correct, then the Pegasus 2 again competes with pricier r 2 r ladder ducts. We don't have a preamp stage and volume control, so the signal path is shorter. And if you own a power amplifier, then you'll need a preamplifier to control the volume. We again have a hybrid power supply implementation consisting of a mean well switching mode power supply and an all core linear and regulated transformer. Many companies nowadays are using hybrid power supplies, getting the advantages of both, which is instant current flow, low ripple and noise. And since we have a higher capacitance, I'm sure this will be a dead silent unit. The only thing which I don't quite uh, like on the Pegasus 2, which was exactly the same on Pegasus 1, is the voltage output of its RCA and XLR outputs, coming at 2.2 volts via RCA and 3.55 volts via XLR. In very simple terms, you'll need to crank the volume a little bit higher on your amplifier to uh, get the same sound pressure level on the Pegasus versus your own DAC. So what was a volume of 60 on your setup will be a volume of 65, maybe 70 on the Pegasus, which is not a very big deal, but I thought you should know about this. This is pretty much it, so let's hit some eardrums. Three days ago, I posted my Barson Voyager review, and since it was still on the table, I decided to uh, try the Pegasus 2 in my head file setup, so I removed that Rockner Wave Dream signature, I included this one. Luckily, it works just great from the stock form via i squared s connection with the Rockner Wave Dream Net Rune server, a music server, so I started listening immediately to some tunes. And right off the bat, I felt that uh, the mid-range is clearly sweeter, is bolder, is elevated from the ground compared to a reference grade DAC, so compared to my daily drivers, Rockna Wave Dream Signature and Dave by Cord Electronics, the mid-range is clearly fuller bodied. Uh, it's elevated from the ground and you can feel that basically instantly. It was trying to steal my attention for sure, especially with uh, vocal performance, everything that has to do with uh, uh, air instruments, string instruments, just sounded a little bit sweeter compared to my daily drivers. Uh, there is clearly more emotion oozing from this one. It was probably made on purpose to sound this way. Uh, so not exactly reference material, but more fun, pleasing, more engaging in a way. Uh, especially with blues, classical, with rock, everything that has to do with a vocal uh, performance with uh, acoustic instruments, so clearly it sounds really fun in a way with music. The bass has the very usual r 2 r characteristics, so if you ever tried an r 2 r duck before, then you know that the bass is a little bit different compared to, say, a Delta Sigma duck, for example. So it's not that fast sounding in the bass, but it is fatter sounding in the bass. So the bass is thick, it's uh, again quite bold, it punches pretty hard actually in the bass, but it's not really going uh, in and out, you know, in split seconds. 
Also, you can feel the innards of the base, everything that is the texture of the base, but not so much the outline or the sharpness of the base. So we're getting a higher quantity wise in terms of base, but a lower quality wise uh, when it comes to base information. So again, it was made to sound uh, slightly more fun, more engaging. But uh, lots of folks are actually chasing this kind of performance with this slow sounding blues and jazz. The bass notes are also thicker sounding than usual. Uh, compared to my daily drivers, compared to Delta Sigma DAX, uh, clearly you can feel that there is more energy oozing from the low end. Starting with the 20 Hz actually. So if you like a slightly bolder performance in the bass and mid-range, uh, then Pegasus 2 is definitely that kind of unit. It almost feels like uh, the Pegasus was created for hardcore music lovers and not so much for snobby audiophiles because it actually does justice to music but not so much, it's not that impressive in terms of technicality so uh, you'll not get the last drop of information resolution game is not really uh, very high on this one it's not the most snappiest or the fastest sounding unit out there so the technicalities are definitely there but uh, those are not really stealing your attention so don't expect some like the fast tunes or the last drop information in terms of resolution that is not going to happen but it will definitely try to uh, you know elevate your mood and make you feel great while listening to music and just immerse yourself in the act of music listening i was already picturing in my mind that this one won't work that great with electronica clearly because it doesn't have the pace it doesn't have the speed it doesn't have the transients so I engaged the latest Infected Mushroom album, which by the way was revealed four days ago. Please check it out. It's an amazing sounding album if you are into Psytrance and Electronica in general. It's very clean sounding and very snappy and very punchy as well. In a few seconds, uh, lots of energy was oozing from my loudspeakers and also from my headphones. Uh, again, it was not going in, in and out in split seconds. And while it didn't have the best control of the drivers, I still tapped my foot and I still grooved along. So does it work with Electronica? Hell yes, it works very good with Electronica and so does uh, Rogue Tunes as well because it was infusing more presence in the mid-range and bass, uh, adding lots of richness and texture compared to cheap-based Delta Sigma converters. I moved it to my living room in here and I started listening to my loudspeakers and I started listening to a wider variety of tunes and right off the bat again I was feeling that the sound is airier, there were more sounds to my left and right uh, compared to say Audolithic AH90 that I reviewed not so long ago and also compared to the Gold Note IS10 which mind you is considerably more expensive. After several tracks it was uh, clear to me that Pegasus does sound stage in depth nicer compared to units somewhere in between 1000 and 2000 US dollars. For example, Topping DX9 is a marvelous piece of engineering. I really like that one. It's very technical sounding, it's snappy sounding, it's fast, it's fuller bodied compared to anything that Topping has done before. I really like its preamp section, I really like its headphone amplifier section. Everything is right on that one. But this one is slightly fuller bodied sounded. Uh, this one is slightly wider and a little bit deeper sounding compared to the X9. So this one is clearly losing uh, the resolution gain compared to the X9, for example. It's not that fast, it's not that clean sounding, it's not that technical sounding overall, uh, but it does justice to music a little bit more. It's just calling you to listen to more tunes, uh, something again that happens on the X9, but uh, this one does it better. It's hard to explain by words, but uh, clearly there's something happening with the harmonics on the Pegasus with that art wire ladder DAC configuration compared to a chip based Delta Sigma converter. Pegasus 2 also trades a nimble approach of music production, it's not very snappy sounding with lots of richness, with lots of body and higher density than usual. And you can feel that uh, 
it's a different breed of DA converter. It's a different kind of sound with every cell of your body, not only with your ears or eardrums. And if you already have a dedicated preamplifier or a nice integrated amplifier, then the Pegasus 2 will unfold its wings and deliver an impressive soundstage on all axes. And this is one of its strongest skills. Moving on to dynamics, the first thing that you'll notice is that you have a slightly lower headroom on the Pegasus connected to, you know, an integrated amplifier or a preamp and power amplifier. Uh, mostly because you have a slightly lower voltage output via that RCA and XLR output. So if you want to compare this one with another DAC, then you need to do volume matching because this one will sound uh, not so loud compared to a regular DAC. Apart from this, if you have plenty of headroom on your headphone amplifier, integrated amplifier, preamplifier, then uh, simply don't worry about that. The difference is not that huge, about 2 dB or something like that. I started listening to Who Do Man Blues, and I don't know why I like this record. It's noisy, it's old, it's unpolished, it's very raw. But this is exactly what I like about it. It's very raw, it's natural. Um, it's not processed, it sounds real, it sounds like you're listening to a really good reel-to-reel -reel tape, not like a digital record or something like that. One thing that I really really like is that uh, this record has an extreme stereo effect. You have plenty of sounds to your right and left, but close to nothing in the middle. This effect is much worse via headphones, and it's okay via loudspeakers. Back then, headphones weren't invented yet, so clearly they were mastering music only for loudspeakers. This album, I'm sorry, works uh, great uh, with loudspeakers, and if you want to uh, know exactly how big or how holographic uh, your setup sounds, your loudspeakers, your DAC and amplifiers, then this album is really great, because if you have close to nothing, in the middle, then you need to invest or change something in your chain. Now, luckily I had plenty of sounds in the middle, so clearly it was doing soundstage nicer compared to a regular Delta Sigma DAC. When I'm listening to this record, for no reason, I'm thinking about watching a black and white movie that is not so clean, not very resolving, it's grainy, lots of noise and so on. Uh, but Pegasus is somehow trying to improve the color of the picture. It adds a little bit of color, a little bit of saturation, which a regular duck is not doing. It also softens the grain and the over sharpness and the noise, like adding an oversampling filter over a high resolution picture. The sharpness is now gone, but the colors are so much juicier. Everything is popping all around you out of nowhere and just boosting the perception that I'm listening to a 90s, 70s album and not to a brand new release. Now let's talk about the not so great part, which is dynamic range and resolution of this unit. For starters, I'll say that I never felt that it was seriously lacking resolution or some sounds are missing. I still heard all those micro details, mastering errors, some noises. All of those were present, but those were not shouting at me, hey, look at me, I'm here. That never happened. Also, the over sharpness effect of modern day converters is not present in here. We don't have tens of digital filters, we don't have some special effects, some enhancements. That is not really what Pegasus does, it's devoid of that. It doesn't try to overdo things in terms of resolution, but just show you the limits of R to R technology at this price point. Uh, can it be beaten by cheaper converters at this price point in terms of dynamic range and resolution? Yes, by plenty of them. Uh, but I do believe the skills, the stronger skills of the Pegasus are actually not resolution, uh, but the fun factor. Clearly, textures, naturalness, everything that makes you feel great while listening to music. You can do high resolution art war ducks, but sadly not at this price point, and Musician Audio has plenty of offerings. Aquarius is clearer and Taurus is so much clearer sounding. Uh, but I do believe for this price it's okay, it's not really lacking in this department. Let's briefly talk about the noise floor of this unit. And to nobody's surprise, this is a dead silent unit, very much like the Pegasus 1 was. 
This one has a hybrid power supply and many manufacturers are implementing this kind of power supply. So getting the advantages of both low ripple, low noise and super fast transient response. Uh, we have this already on the Pegasus. Also the capacitance went up by 50%. Uh, we have a better filtering in here. So clearly simply forget about noises in both a uh, head five setup or loudspeaker setup. I went very close to the tweeters of those loudspeakers. I pushed the volume higher and I put pause and simply I couldn't hear anything. It was simply dead silent, no noises, nothing like that. We are very clean sounding in terms of noise floor, so it fights noise very effectively, which is a very good sign already. I know it's almost nonsense talking about frequency response in a DAC because they all measure like a straight line. And this is actually a fact. Uh, if you look at uh, DAC measurements, they all measure like a flat line, you know, from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. However, that doesn't mean there are changes in terms of how the energy is being given to you, how you are, you know, perceiving that energy in the bass, mid range and treble. And that's why I need to talk about the frequency response on this unit. The bass is fatter. <laughs> It's not faster, but it's fatter. It's thick, uh, it's more textured compared to a Delta Sigma DAC, for example, a cheap bass DAC. Uh, if your headphones and speakers are up to the task, then you'll hear a slightly more energy oozing from the low end, from the bass. It starts from 20 Hertz naturally, and you can hear that low end rumble if your headphones and your loudspeakers are up to the task. Its movement, it's not lightning fast and you can feel that basically immediately. And that happened with most, if not really all, r 2 r ducks in this price category. You can feel that immediately when comparing this one with a Delta Sigma DAC. My reference ducks are doing it faster. I have a faster transit response, faster base movement on my reference ducks, but this again doesn't uh, surprise me in any way. In the end, the bass is quite strong on this one. You'll be getting slightly more energy in this region at the cost of a lesser speed. The mid-range of the Pegasus 2 is by far the nicest thing to describe in terms of frequency response. It's elevated from the ground, that is for sure, but goddamn, it's so seducing, it's warm, it's sweet sounding, like a warm blanket always stays all around you. Uh, the vocal performance in particular is really quite outstanding, always trying to steal your attention. All those flutes, pipes and string based instruments almost like have magic properties, something like that. They have a longer vibration than usual uh, compared to say a Delta Sigma DAC and that is actually the standout of our to our ladder DACs. And this creates a feeling that music is simply playing in front of me. You can get a more technical sounding unit that is for sure but a more emotionally engaging sounding one, I'm not really sure. It transitions from mid-range to treble uh, very smoothly, like putting butter on a frying pan, so everything is so easily going. Nothing is trying to offend you, so forget about sharpness or brightness with this one. Actually, there is a little bit of roll off somewhere past 14 kilohertz. The energy is not shouting on you. There is less energy in that region. So this is not probably the most sparkly sounding DAC, so treble heads will probably try to avoid this one. But at the same time, none of the sharpness and fake ringing associated with entry-level converters can be found on the Pegasus 2. You will still be getting your daily dose of trebles, but without making a huge splash about it. It probably won't impress treble heads again, but uh, music lovers that care for the act of music listening, for sure. Wrapping up, this is a slightly more refined version of the good old Pegasus, while retaining absolutely the same price point it had four years ago. And if that is not progress, then I don't know what it is. This time around, it should work with most, if not with all, Rune endpoints, Rune servers, wired and wire streamers via that I2S uh, connection. Uh, by default, it comes with the Rocknas slash PS Audio I2S uh, pin configuration. And if that is not working for you, you have seven additional settings to explore. So I think it should cover basically all I2S connections. Filtering capacitance went up by 50%. We have a brand new custom 
gold plated AC socket and everything that you liked about the original Pegasus is still in here on the Pegasus 2, just a little bit better. The only things I can complain about is a slightly lower resolution and speed compared to a world-class DAC, reference DAC, also a slightly lower voltage output compared to an industry standard DAC. But apart from that, which are not big you know, complaints, uh, I do well heartedly recommend the Pegasus 2, especially for music lovers around the globe. This is it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed my review. My name is Sando and I'll see you very, very soon.